All right, I get that I've already dedicated two different diatribes to whether or not you should capitalize the G in God. And I know I did one of them pretty recently. So it's it, like I'm at risk of making this seem like an obsession. I know. But I kind of have to talk about it again because I recently encountered an example that perfectly encapsulates why I have such an issue with Strunk and White when it comes to this topic. So last weekend, I'm watching an idiotic movie for our sister show, God Awful Movies. It's, it's about a cocaine dealer who's all immoral and secular, but then he gets caught and he goes to jail and he finds Jesus. But before all that happens, while he's still an evil atheist, he and a drug runner that works for him are talking about their burgeoning cocaine market in China, and they have this ridiculous exchange. The drug runner says, quote, cocaine is like the new God to these people, end quote. And his boss, the main character, responds, quote, we don't believe in God, so that's okay, end quote. Now, for a discussion on what a profoundly silly thing that is to say, I'm going to have to refer you over to episode 470 of God Awful Movies. But for our purposes here, the only thing that matters about the exchange is the capitalization of the word God. Because as I'm transcribing it, it occurs to me that this perfectly encapsulates the problem with the existing convention on this, right? Because if we're following the letter of the grammatical law, we don't capitalize the G the first time around, right? When the drug runner says it, when the guy goes, cocaine is the new God of these people. But we do capitalize it the second time when the boss says we don't believe in God. Now, set aside for a second that this was written by a person so inept Gutenberg would wish he had just taken up fishing or something. Obviously, this ridiculous exchange would never happen in real life. But that's beside the point. What this hack-ass writer has accidentally done is provided this perfect example of the way modern English flows back and forth in its use of the word God, right? Because the first guy is talking about God in the sense of generic object of supreme worship, i.e. this guy's God is baseball or she treats her boyfriend like a God. The second guy is talking about Jesus's dad, right? Or at least that's what the capitalization convention would have you believe. Now, of course, he's not making a statement on the supremacy of one God or the other. In fact, he's doing the exact opposite. He's saying he doesn't believe in any God. The way we express that in modern English is I don't believe in God rather than I don't believe in God's but it's intended to express the same thing. The fact that the convention is singular is really just an outgrowth of the times when you could still get burned alive for acknowledging that Christian God was on the same level as all the heathen ones, right? So all this bullshit about capitalizing the G because it's a proper noun is out the fucking window at this point. And yet so-called proper English wouldn't allow for this. The word God refers to a concept here, a concept meant to encompass all God claims, not just the monotheistic ones. And yet the standard linguistic convention insists that we treat the concept as an individual with a name. And look, I get that this might not seem like it matters. Right. I mean, I spend a lot more time writing the word God than most atheists. So I'm sure like, you know, it's less of a day to day concern for most people. But it does matter. It matters because language subtly reprograms the way we think. That was the whole fucking point of Newspeak in 1984. Right. If we take away the word freedom, then it'll make it harder for people to talk about and think about. And, and, and if we conflate lowercase God with uppercase God, we make it harder for people to distinguish the two. Think about that in terms of apologetics. Right. If you've ever spent any time at all listening to Christians try to justify their religion, you'll notice that they spend an awful lot of time trying to prove things that have nothing to do with Jesus's dad, right? They'll spend a whole fucking debate trying to prove that something must have created the universe as though that would imply the existence of their God, as though proving the universe had an antecedent would get us within striking distance of their theology. It also happens when they're called upon to defend their God. As though proving the universe had an antecedent would get us within striking distance of their theology. It also happens when they're called upon to defend their God, right? Suddenly all the specifics can melt away and God just becomes some slippery concept or primacy. Now, all of those specifics will suddenly rematerialize as soon as it's time to deny rights to gay people or subjugate women or whatever. Suddenly that vague concept will turn back into a dude who wrote a book. But the instant we start pointing out the contradictions in the book, you'll be back to a concept that just inspired the book instead. This isn't always a malicious trick that Christians are pulling on us because we've done so much to linguistically conflate the concept of God and the specifics of their God. They often don't have the ability to think of those as two distinct things. And that's a point worth dwelling on. Right. When we fail to capitalize the G in God, we're often accused of being disrespectful to religious people. But it seems way more disrespectful to me to reduce their God to a generic concept. Right. Right. 